Good morning. I think I need to put this down. I gotta get the lighting right in my studio here. Some say now that makes me look like a raccoon with the bags under my eyes. I just can't help it. I'm getting old. So, anyway, good morning. Good morning, Miss Julie, Miss Joyce. Joyce, don't forget. Or are you guys praying today? I know that um, Paula is not going to be there today. So, Kathy, good to see you. Glad you guys are on here. Let me see here. Who else is on here? I, I can see the little things up there. But can't see very good on the phone, but anyway, good morning. It's a Monday. Here we are. Andy, I thought I saw him, Andy. Oh, Miss Kosha. We're so glad you're back on here. So, missed you when you were gone. So, and... <laughs> That's funny, Dan. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, now my wife's getting fancy. Oh dear. Whatever that is. You know, I heard some preachers saying that those things that you're using there, my dear, are I don't know, ungodly, you know, of the devil. Something like that. What was that they said? I don't know. Preachers can get lost in such a mess on some things, so all right, it's Monday. My mind's wandering all over the place. This could be a dangerous day, so we shall see. I, I, um, I want you to know I did not turn on the TV, watch, look at, even see who who won any kind of football game uh, yesterday. I guess they had. I guess they had games yesterday. So could care less. Hope they all lose. Uh, losers, all of them. So, and uh, just give you an update. Over the weekend, 50 people shot and 11 uh, fatally in uh, Chicago. It is now by far more dangerous to walk the streets of Chicago than it is to go through downtown Baghdad. And uh, uh, you better just, maybe we want to move to Baghdad if you live in Chicago and, and get out of there and move somewhere uh, somewhere safer uh, than Chicago. So uh, I also read, uh, I'll, Teresa, you see on there, I guess you guys aren't having uh, ladies' prayer today. So, but um, I also read a, uh, they say, I didn't read the op-ed, op but there was an op-ed in the, the Hack uh, Atlantic that had started the lies about Trump a couple weeks ago, but anyway, this guy wrote an op-ed and said that uh, Republicans and conservatives, you either need to stay home and not vote or vote for Biden because uh, if Biden loses, that there are going to be horrible riots in America, and so to save America, we need to vote for Biden to keep the little crybabies from... Uh, uh, rioting. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> I guess that's what we'll do. We'll just uh, hide out and uh, kind of like the, you know, we're, we're terrified of the COVID. I don't know if you read this too, but I mean, Israel, Israel is shutting down to where they are not having their, their high holidays, which start up, I think this Friday. I, I mean, we're, we're talking craziness. So, and I can guarantee you that uh, the the Orthodox Jews are livid with with this. And I mean, shutting down the country again uh, to the point where not even able to Orthodox Jews aren't able to do the uh, high holidays. That I mean, that's going to be craziness in in Israel. And I didn't know this. <clears throat> I thought the great state of Texas, and I'm not sure if. Carolee and Nelson are on here this morning. I'd hate to, to trash the, the great state of Texas here, Carolee, but um, I was talking to a couple at our church yesterday whose parents live in San Antonio. San Antonio is completely locked down. I, I mean, you, you 
the only ones get out are those that are uh, whatever whatever they call that. Uh, I don't know, necessary or or uh, whatever the word is. Don't remember what it is. But who determines that? <clears throat> who determines who's who's needed and who's not? Some bureaucrat sitting in some cubicle somewhere. And I, I mean, it's just it's a it's amazing to me. But. So don't go to Texas right now because it's not the great state that everybody says it is. Uh, definitely not San Antonio. Uh, hide out there. Uh, they're, they're all scared to death and hiding under their couch uh, with their uh, little pink mask on. So, but, uh, yep, it's Monday. Let's see who we can insult today and uh, <laughs> see if you come back, right? So... <clears throat> I, I uh, had some of those, <clears throat> oh, I, I did, you know, in all seriousness, too. You know, we, we want to talk about persecution. Uh, I, I read an article this morning that in Ethiopia, since the end of June, over 500 uh, proclaimed Christians. So, you know, e Ethiopia, I, I don't know what they, you know, they would probably call like Mormons, Christians, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, all of those uh, Catholics, you know, Baptist, uh, every other did not essential. That's the word. But anyway, um, all of these, uh, uh, different denominations, but since the end of June, over 500 Christians have been slaughtered in Ethiopia and, uh, the Muslims, the radicals are, are going in there and we call them radicals, but they're, they're Muslims. And, and so <clears throat> there's just those that have, uh, been rad radicalized and there are those who are uh, soon to be radicalized but over 500 uh, believers or uh, professed believers have lost their lives uh, in Ethiopia so don't think that uh, persecution and martyrdom is, is not in uh, uh, taking place in, in the world today it is and it's very prevalent as a matter of fact there are more people martyred for their faith today than in any time in history, and so, uh, and and so you got to ask yourself, you know, we're we're dealing with some craziness here in our in our country, but uh, so far we're not being threatened by our lives. We're we're threatened to get our churches shut down, and and uh, you know some of that. But uh, how, how far are you willing to go in your faith? I mean, I. I have to ask myself that, and and I want to I want to say that I'm willing to go the whole way. You know, if I lose my life and my faith, then so be it. But <clears throat> I, I want to the the way you prepare for that is every day you're walking with the Lord, you, you're doing what He asks you to do, and and uh, I'm, I was reminded this morning in in um, some of my reading, you know, the, the privilege of of just sharing the word. And I was reading, uh, there was actually a passage there in Romans chapter 10 that, that uh, how can someone believe something if they haven't heard it? And how are they going to hear it unless there's a preacher? And, and the preacher then needs to share the word. And, and that's what we need to be doing. We need to be telling others about Christ. And we need to encourage them to, to, to look up and, and to look to their Savior and, and uh, trust Him and, you know, and and realize that they've been created for a greater purpose than ju just living, really just living like an animal here and in, in uh, day to day and, and seeking whatever it is that you can get to think it's going to make you happy because it doesn't and, and uh, you know, live with the eternal mindset. And so <clears throat> I was reading that. And then I also read in, in Psalm 58 and, uh, uh, here, you know, David was writing, and, and he's writing about God's justice. He's writing about the injustices of the world, and and you know, I, I and we see that. And he says, "Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men?" And 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 really, he, he, the the answer to this is rhetorical. He said, "No, you don't. Yea, in heart, you work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth." The, the wicked are estranged from the, the womb, There's, and they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. 
uh, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth uh, of the young lions, O Lord. I, I mean, you know, I was reading this this morning, and, and I know I've, I've said this before, but uh, I, I do believe we need to reach out to people with the gospel and and share the gospel. But I also, I see nothing wrong when, when you run into someone who is truly an enemy of the cross and and hear that, that, you know, is using their power to persecute the church and, and uh, uh, you know, d do the things that are, are against God. What's wrong with, with praying, God, take care of the enemy? And, and and I'm not I'm not wishing bad on them. I'm just praying for God to stop them from doing what they're doing. And and he says, as a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. I, I, I mean, David was just about as uh, uh, you know uh, direct here as as anything. I mean, destroy them before your Pots can feel the thorns. He shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The, and then look at this. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. And, and you know, some, some, some people would say, maybe I'm wrong in my thinking, but... I don't know how you can be wrong in your thinking when it's right here in the scripture and you, you just, you, you're not trying to do it yourself. You're not trying to be the, the tool that God uses to administer justice. You are just asking God, deliver us from this evil. Let, let them see the, the wickedness of their ways and, and let them see that you're not happy with them. And, and I know right now that, that his judgment is raining upon the just and the unjust and, and, there are good people that are losing their homes in, in these fires, and, and there's been good people lose their lives in the hurricanes and in the earthquakes that, that God ha has allowed to happen. And, and, but, you know, why, why can we not pray? God, make this a little more direct, uh, directed towards those that are evil and let them see that their ways are evil and, and let the rest of the country see that that you are standing on, on judgment and justice and, and uh, allow that to happen. I mean, do you, do you think that God didn't get their attention when, when Herod uh, stood up to give a speech and they said, oh, it's as if God himself is speaking and uh, God killed him? I mean, go back and read in the Gospel of John, I believe it is, read how he died. I mean, God made it evident that he wasn't happy with him at all. And, and so I, I read these Psalms and, and, uh, I, I do, I, I just, I need to pray more that, that God would protect our country and that God, one of the ways that you protect our country is, is we need to share the word. We need to be willing to, to share the word with whoever will listen. And those who are enemies trying to shut that down, Lord, I pray that you deal with them. And I pray that you deal with them in a public way, just as they are publicly denouncing you. I pray that you will publicly administer justice to them and, and let people see your power, your righteousness, and your judgment uh, upon their lives. And and so, anyway, that's some of the ramblings of, of a Monday morning. And, and then I, I was reading in Proverbs uh, 23, and... Uh, I, I just read one, one, one proverb today, verse 12, and it says, Apply thine heart unto instruction in thine ears to the word of knowledge. And the instruction that he's talking about isn't the instruction of the world, obviously. It's the instruction of the word of God. And the words of knowledge are the, the words of, of uh, God. And he shows us how we ought to live. And, and uh, we... Uh, I, I found this interesting years ago. I was talking to a professor of mine who had been in ministry years and years and and uh, asking him if he ever preached through Proverbs. He said, yes, but he said, you need to wait until you're you're older to do so. And and it makes sense because experience is a wonderful teacher. And I did, and, and, over, uh, it, and it took us a, a long time, probably three years to get through the book of Proverbs. But 
Uh, I just did that just a few years ago, and and uh, I can understand uh, more so why he said that because you know uh, just age and experience is a good teacher, but you know the the proverbs we need to spend a lot of time in those, and and I mean they're just daily practical living in in what we ought to be doing in our lives, and 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 the the instruction and the wisdom and the knowledge all, all of that seems to represent christ and and how how he he leads us and he is the word and he's the one that you know it's his word that teaches us and and we need to stay in it every one of you guys that are that are watching this or that will watch this the the most important thing that that we as believers can do is spend time in the word i mean we need to uh learn what it says and and let it instruct us and guide us in in the in the truth and 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 to guard the truth you know i that that reminded me too of of what i read over in in uh, i started galatians today in uh, my part of the devotions of the new testament and uh here in, in galatians we see that I guess it, it, it helps to understand a little bit of the historical context of, of when it was written. And so I always like to do that when I, when I start a new book. And, and uh, Galatia was a, was a province, and, and it's actually where modern-day Turkey is at today. So if you know where that's at, up above the Mediterranean Sea and north side of that. But um, it, it's there that... That whole province that that Paul writes the book of Galatians to all those churches and all those believers that are uh, there in in uh, Galatia and uh, the the issue with that is that the majority of those that were in the churches had had uh, were were Jews uh, born born into Judaism. I mean they were uh, you know nationalists, you might say, and so. Uh, many of them had moved up that way, and, and then now they had gotten saved. And however, the problem with with them is, is that they were they were still loyal to their nation, and they were loyal to to the the Judaistic teachings. And the 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 priests of that time had had lost sight of of what the what the law was for, and what the uh, all of the the high feasts and the high festivals were about, and the holidays were about. They were all to to point them to the Messiah, and and what they had done, they had lost sight that the law was there to show them you can't abide by it all. You sin and you come short, and so you become short of the glory of God, and and so that all points them to the Messiah that they need to look to and trust. Well. The, the Judaistic teachings of that day had lost sight of that. And so they were saying that you must keep the law. First of all, you, you got to become a Jew. And then secondly, you must keep the law to, in and trust Jesus as your Savior. So they were adding things to that. And, and so Paul wrote the book of Galatians showing them that you have freedom in Christ and in freedom from the law and freedom from works that uh, try to uh, that they were trying to teach them that they needed to do. And I find this interesting too that years ago there was a guy on the local radio station and it was on a Sunday afternoon and, and I'd listen to this guy and just get all wound up because he actually used the book of Galatians to try to prove that you needed to work for your salvation. And it's just, I'm like, dude, you are like totally wrong and, and you're messed up with the very teaching of, of what Galatians tells us. And Galatians is, is all, what it's doing is showing them that you cannot add to your, your salvation. You cannot add to the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day and when he rose again the third day it shows us that God accepted the sacrifice that Jesus had made for the sins of the world and so the the judgment of sin has been dealt with on the cross those that then by faith 
come to Jesus and, and, and trust him as their savior. And, and, and when they trust Jesus as their savior, then the judgment of sin has been dealt with when they place their faith in Christ as their savior. All the works is done by Jesus. It's not done by us. And, and, and we, need to, we need to understand that, that salvation is by faith alone through God's grace. That's it. That's, that's it. And, and uh, the, the Jews had gotten to the point, yes, you need to trust Jesus, but you also need, need to become a Jew and, and you need to start doing these, these uh, festivals and, and you need to be making these sacrifices and, and you also need to be adhering to all the laws that, that the Pharisees and the Sadducees are, are trying to institute and, and these are the things that will make you holy and, and right in the eyes of God. And it doesn't work. And it's that same thing in our lives today. There are those, and, and the guy that was using this that I heard on the radio kept saying, you must be baptized to get saved. No, you don't. No, you don't. And, 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 the, and so he was, what he would say is that, well, he's just talking about the law. You can't add to uh, the gospel with the law, but you can add to uh, salvation with your baptism. And then what you find out, all that guy ever emphasized was getting baptized. That's it. So now all of a sudden, all it is is a complete work salvation. We don't care what you believe just as long as you get dunked. Well, that, that doesn't work. And so uh, read Galatians. Read it with an open heart and open mind. I challenge you to do so if you don't believe me. So, But I, I just was reading this, and, and I just read chapter 1 today and, and wanted to take my time uh, uh, through this. And first thing that jumped out at me was verse 6. And it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I, he said, I am... I am shocked at how easily you're swayed and, and how easily you will believe something else that ha has come down the pike. And, and I also had, had looked at this week because I'm doing something out at Ambassador here in, in a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks in teaching some of these guys uh, in, in the Preacher Boys class and, and Ephesians 4 and, and there uh, God says that, that Jesus actually gave gifts to the local church and um and and some of those is the pastor teacher and then also the evangelist and what were they to do they were to build up the congregation and and prepare people for the ministry and, and to help them to where they weren't swayed uh easily by every wind of doctrine that comes through and and that's what we have to do we have to we have to study and learn the scripture well enough that when you hear somebody come in that is teaching something false, there's a caution flag that comes up in your mind, and and then you study it out. and And if you need help, then that's why you're that's part of the reason your pastor is here to to help you with that. And you can call me and and send me a text or a message and say, hey, what what is going on with this passage here? And and we can explain it together and just let it explain itself. And you'll find the scriptures always explain itself and show us that salvation is by faith and grace alone. And there is absolutely no works involved. And, and so I say all those things because, you know, this is my devotion and, I, and I'm trying to process these things in my own mind. But some, some people have gotten pretty angry with me that, I'm so narrow and and, and uh, not very accepting of, of many denominations. Well, it's not the denomination that you're against, it's the teaching. And if there is anything that tries to add to salvation, they're wrong. Pentecostals, many of them will say that you must speak in tongues in order to be saved because that's an evidence of the Holy Spirit of God. No, it's not. not that's, that becomes a work salvation. Church of Christ teaches you've got to be baptized to be saved. No, you don't. Lutheran churches will cheat, teach the same thing. And I've had, look, I've had some Lutherans really argue with me about this, but all you got to ask is why do you baptize your babies then? And, and, and uh, they baptize their babies because they 
think that it's important to be baptized to be saved. Look, I, I think our Lutherans today have forgotten what Martin Luther did. Martin Luther was the one that, that uh, broke away from the Catholic Church, and the biggest reason was because of the baptism of babies. And, and um, babies don't understand anything. Babies are safe and, and secure in the hands of God un, until they come to that point where they can recognize what sin is and they can recognize that they're actually rejecting Christ. And, and that, that accountability is different for every kid. But babies don't understand any of that. So, so yeah, I, I am cautious. And, and, and I am very narrow on this. And, and, and we ought to be very narrow on this. I mean, we got to guard this. And because there are always those that are that that it, look it says in verse 7 which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ and that there's all kinds that do that and and as a pastor i, I want to take my calling seriously and and protect first of all protect the purity of the word and so you preach the word to the best of your ability according to what it says in the historical context, in, in, the, in, in the context of the, the writing itself, and, and uh, explaining what it says and, and leaving it at that. And, but you guard that. And then you guard that from people in your church family. And that's the thing that just annoys me anymore is because there's so many preachers on, on the Internet and on TV and I mean, I have people asking me all the time, hey, have you met so-and-so, or have you ever listened to so-and-so, or have you ever watched so-and-so, you really need to watch this guy? Look, if I watched everything that everybody watches, I, I'd be all screwed up. And, and <clears throat> you can't vet those characters that are on TV or on the internet. Where are they at? You, you don't know where they're at. They, they may have set something up in the background, makes it look like a big church, and they're doing it out of the basement of their mama's house. I mean, you don't know... You don't know what these people are doing. And, and so, you know, get in your local church and, and uh, listen to the Word of God and, and find that one that, that preaches and teaches the Word and, and be grounded in that and then guard it. I mean, earnestly contend for the faith. And, and so, yeah, I guess I am a little ornery about that. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I don't ever want to compromise that. And so, anyway... You know, I and and I as I read Galatians, then it just reemphasizes to me how important it is to guard that. And and you know why? I know that it's true. What we preach is you you read the rest of Galatians one verses eleven through twenty four, and you see there that Paul gives his his testimony of how God changed his life and made him into who he was, and 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 it says at the very end, and they glorified God in me. Well, I, I've seen that too. I've seen God take people and and save them and then change their lives. And it's not by some written rules that, that I've written down or our church has written down or, uh, you know, the, the guideline to holiness are all of these behaviors. It's God doing it, God working in their lives and changing them. And, and, and you just help them. You just take them where they're at and you help them get where they need to be. And you do that by just teaching and preaching the word of God. And you are patient with them and you love them and you help them to grow. And, and you, yeah, you point things out along the way and, and what the scriptures say and help them. But for the most part, God does it. And I've seen it. I've just seen it over and over. And, and that's the nice thing about staying in a place as a pastor for a long time. You get to see that and you get to see these people change and, and, become a, a believer that is walking by faith and their faith is strong and they grow and they then they blossom as a, as a believer and and truly it's a blessing and so those and and so i know that even in all my faults that the word of god is pure and we guard that and we protect that and we preach it to the to the best of our abilities the the truth of what it is and then watch god do the work god does it and we just get to be a part of that. We just set the table and then uh, God does the rest. So 
anyway, it's a it's a challenging time and uh, it's a challenging days for certain. I mean, with everything going on, we need to be safe. We we need to uh, walk walk uh, carefully around us and and. Uh, not only physically safe, but you also need to be spiritually safe. Just be careful of just swallowing everything that you hear from people. Uh, take the word of God and read it. And look, anybody on here, even if you don't live around here and you're not a part of our church, if you're reading the scriptures and, and you have some questions, shoot me a text. All right. If you need my phone number, uh, send me a message here on Facebook. I, I'm happy to give you my cell phone and you guys can text me, call me anytime, and I'll do everything I can to help explain what the, the Bible says. And uh, best thing in the world for every believer is to, to get in the Word of God and, and understand what it says and, and walk with Him. And so that's the challenge of a Monday. Here it is, craziness around us, and we are going to stay in the Word of God, and, and we're going to praise Him, we're going to walk with Him, and we're going to be challenged along the way, and that's okay. God's word gives us the answer to every challenge that we deal with, and uh, it's going to be a good day. And uh, Todd, thank you for that. I do appreciate that. And and uh, um, I'll pray for you when God brings you to my mind, and, and I appreciate you being on here. And be safe up there in windy Wyoming. So and uh, but uh, God bless you guys, and and Dean and and Pat. You guys be safe on, as you travel today, and and uh, pray for you guys and. Uh, Dean, one of these days we'll get together and do some fishing and uh, see each other. So, John Hasing, see you on here too. I did go see your mom the other day, and uh, you know, God bless her. She's a she's a wonderful woman, and uh, you know, she she loves you guys, and uh, we we pray that God just uh, lifts her up and and helps her along the way too. So, but uh, God bless you guys. It's a good day today, and remember. There's all kinds of stuff on TV tonight other than that stinking NFL. Uh, why don't you watch something that's worthwhile? I, I don't know. I mean, anything other than that junk that's on there. So, But uh, anyway, you guys have a great day. God bless. Just keep walking with him.